In this chapter, um, we're going to look at annotative type st uh, styles, things such as text and dimensions. It's annotator drawing. In this particular lesson, we're going to look at text. Um, text is obviously useful for whether you're typing a room name or using it to, as notes to annotate um, maybe a, some sort of detail or section or elevation. So there's three different types of text that we can use in AutoCAD. Um, the very basic one that was first out with um, AutoCAD is a command just called text. Another one that's very similar to text is called dtext. And the last one that I use most often is called mtext, which uh, stands for multi-line text. Multi-line text is probably the more comprehensive one in terms of formatting. You can do the most with it. It's not harder to use. It just allows more editing options. So we'll look straight at it. Before we do that though, we're going to look at something called style because when we create a, uh, a text or use text of any kind, we need to have a, a style set. So to look at the style window, we'll type ST and press space or enter. And as you can see, I'm just going to delete this one out. We have two that are the default uh, when we ever open up and it's annotative and standard. We'll look at the difference between those two a little bit later on. At the moment, we've got standard and as you can see up the top here, it says current textile standard. So it's currently set, set the current. And it's also, we have a height that we can set. And I've got mine currently set to 100. And that means it'll be 100 units high in, um, in uh, model space window. So we'll look at some of these other things later. Um, we'll come back to that. So we'll just close that. So that's what we've currently got. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the three different commands. So we're going to type text, the command prompt, press space or enter. And as you can see the command prompt, we can either uh, pick a point to start uh, our text, or we can either type J, press space or enter, or press S and space or enter. So J is to justify, S is to, to select the style. We've already selected our style as standard. Um, so we don't really need to do that again. We can do it from either setting it current, like from the style window that we just in before, or we can type S here and set this, the, uh, the current style from here. And justify, let's look at J for justify. So we'll type J, press space or enter. Now as you can see, there's a whole bunch of things here that have come up. Um, as you can see, the blue letters represent the, um, the command that we can use to set. Now. I think from recollection, left is generally the default. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type L and press space or enter. And now it's going to ask me for a point to start my text. So I'm going to left click somewhere on the model space. And now it's going to ask me for the rotation angle of the text. We'll leave it at zero for now. So we can press enter or space. And it's going to ask me to type some text. Let's just type standard left. Oop left. Now we press enter. Now once we press enter once, it's going to ask us to type again on a second line below it. But if we press enter again, it ends the command. Now what I want to show you with this justify is if I select this, as you can see, there's a little blue grip on the text. Now that means it's been, that's the justification. That means that's where the point of the grip is. It's on the left. Now we open up our properties window by holding our control key and pressing the number one and we go over to justify you can see it's got left here now we'll look at the different type of justifications if we select on center as you can see it now has a grip um, right in the center and it's it's in fact moved the whole text to be uh, from that point where we first inserted it that's now the center point um, we can do it from the middle so that's right in the middle of the text and you can see it move the text down uh, we can do top left and as you can see we can do middle center that's obviously that's often a good one for room names as you can see it's the, the grip is right in the center of the middle center of this text so that's what justification does it allows us to move that grip around uh, it can be very helpful for wanting to center something for instance if we go back to middle center i know that if i if i'll turn on f three, my ortho and my snaps, uh, F8 for ortho. If I select on there, um, I've got my snaps, select on the midpoint and I come down here, 
I know that that's perfectly centered now, right in the middle of this rectangle, because I've had it, um, had the middle center justification set. So that's text. I could show you dtext, or we'll type it anyway. D, or we can just do dt, or we can type the word, but I'll just do dt, space or enter. Again, as you can see, it's similar to text. It just asks you to justify style. Um, we can just ignore that and click a point, and now it asks us for rotation. If I was to type 90 degrees, so 90, press enter, and type uh, standard 90 degrees, press enter, and enter again. As you can see, it's now rotated the, um, the text. If I select on that text and go back over to our properties window, I can now change that back to zero. So now it's set. And as you can see, the justification has defaulted to left. So that's the basics of that one. And the last one I wanted to look at was multi-line text or MT. So we type MT, press space or enter. Again, it asks us for a, a, um, an insertion point. But in this case, it says first corner. And that's gonna ask us for either a second point. Or as you can see, again, here it gives us these options that we can um, go into and by typing H for height or J for justify, line spacing, or we can select any one of those. Um, we can do that either from there or we'll just select another point for now. Left click and we'll type um, multi-line text. Now if I press enter inside these you can see I can go down as many lines as I like and unlike the normal text if I just press space or enter um, multiple times it would end the command but in multi-line text it allows me to keep um, writing so I can put a line and a few other things you'll notice in the multi-line text command is if I highlight this text in here I can then use some of these editing tools such as clicking on here for bold or clicking on here for italics uh, we've got the strike through we've got underline as you can see there's a few different things here overline um, we don't undo anything but there's a few things we can do here we can perhaps change this uh, the the um, uh, the angle which really was put back to zero as you can see that's quite sharp and there's a few other editing tools in there that you can have a look at um, this is different to just what you can do inside the actual style um, window which we looked at earlier this gives us a few more options uh, which aren't available in the style window when we're setting up the style uh, we can also change from here the um, the font so as you can see we'll turn off perhaps some of these and whilst we've got it selected we can also change the text height so I can change that to 200 and as you can see it's changed the text height of that particular text that I've had highlighted but it's left this one at 100 so I'll click OK as you can see we've got um, our multi-line text and again it has just justification in this case it's uh, top left we can change that to perhaps middle center and as you can see it's got one grip right in the middle and if we grab this arrow we can we can push this um, text in and as you can see it, it stretches or s squeezes in uh, depending on how we move that little arrow there so again if we do the top bottom one it moves it to the side so it's a bit yeah it's 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 a lot more you can do with that particular um, textile so I'm gonna erase that E for erase and we're gonna leave this standard left here now if I go back to our style window ST space or enter remember our standard we had it set to 100 now that's in model space a lot of the time when you're setting up your drawings for plotting or printing you're going to want to set up the drawing in paper space. We'll get into that more detail later on, but what I want to do is show you um, a paper space layout that I've set up with three different scales of this um, rectangle. And the way we do that is we click on one of these tabs down here. We're currently on model. If I click on the one that I've set up here already, Anno. Now this is a representation of our paper. Uh, well, as I said, we'll get into more detail about that in another lesson. 
What I have one here is another three gray rectangles. They're actually not just rectangles, they're actually called viewports. And what those viewports allow me to do is set a scale to that to that uh, rectangle. Um, as you can see here, I've, I've got one to 100, small and one to 50, a little bit larger and one to 20, larger again. So viewports allow me to change the scale. But one thing you'll probably notice with the text on the standard text that we've done is Look at the height of that text there compared to over here. It's quite different. And that's not always an ideal thing. If you have a page with multiple scales on it, you might have a, uh, a page that has a floor plan or a part of a floor plan on it, but then you might have some blown up details and of the same area, but the text will change. And it doesn't always look that great when you plot it out when it's like that. It doesn't look very professional. So the way they get around that is what we use annotative scales. So the way we do that is we'll go back to our model space, left click, and we're gonna type ST to go back to our style. We're gonna select annotative, and then we're gonna select set current. Now, I've already set a paper space height there, um, and that's the height that the text is gonna look in our paper space viewport. That can be anything you like. It's, I'm gonna leave it, maybe perhaps at three. Um, this time around, click apply. And as you can see here, the difference is that it has this checkbox ticked, it says annotative, and you can also tell it's annotative by the little triangular shaped um, icon that's next to the left side of it. If I was to untick that, it disappears, tick it again, it comes back. Again, simple things that we can do, we can select um, uh, different uh, fonts. There we go, there's a preview of our font in there. Uh, while we're in here, we'll have a look at a few other things. Um, there are the effects here. Upside down is pretty self-explanatory. Text is upside down and backwards. Um, I don't have never found any use for those things personally, but uh, you might. Um, with factor, also type 5, you can see how much it stretches the text. Um, or I can say 0.5, and it squishes the text together. So that's that. And a bleak angle, if I type that 55, it puts it on a big angle. So we'll leave it at zero, click apply, and we'll click close. So back to the standard window. So we've got our annotative, it's all set. We'll leave that back at one, and we'll click apply, click close. Now what we're gonna do is, we might use multi-line text, MT, press or enter, and select our first point and our last point. And what you want, just type, Anno to represent annotative scale and click OK. As you can see, it's in there, but it's very, very small. And that's the way it's going to look in model space. Now, we go to our paper space viewport. You can also see that it's there, but it's very small. Now, the reason we use annotative though is really to help with the scaling of the text in different viewports. But what we first need to do is tell it which scales we need. So we'll select on, uh, left click on modify panel, and we'll go to annotative object scale, and we're going to add or delete scales. As you can see, the only scale we have here in here at the moment is one to one. So we're going to add some scales. So we'll click on add, and the scales I've currently used is one to 20, one to 50, and one to 100. To select multiple scales, you hold down the control key and left click, and left clicking um, on it or off it, while the control key is held down, we'll either select it or deselect it. The only ones we want. Now, you might think that you could just select all the scales possible, and you could do that. But uh, I'll show you why we won't do that. So I'll click OK, and click OK again. Now, if we highlight that text, as you can see, it shows three different sizes, and that's representing the scales that we're going to be using. Now, if I selected all that, all the scales, that would just be a big mess. So it's best to just use the ones that you want. Now what we're going to do is go back to model, uh, sorry, to back to paper space. And as you can see, we've got the same text, three different scales, but the text height is always the same. And that's ideal, that's what we want. Um, to, you know, that's what we want to use annotative scale, so we've got that um, ability to just be able to draw all the text once and be able to do that. Another thing we can do is if I double click inside that viewport and I move that scale, as you can see that text here 
in that particular scale is independent of these ones. So if I go in here and move this one down here, they're still the same size. It's just that I've moved the actual orientation of them. Um, so that's another thing that you can do with annotative scale. So it's quite a useful little feature. Um, I personally find I don't need to use it a lot because of the way I work, but uh, it's good to be aware of what you can do with that. Um, so that's the sort of basics of, of uh, text. Uh, we'll come back to um, perhaps looking at a bit more detail about uh, throughout the project, about working with it. So the next lesson we'll be looking at dimensions.